Hello. My name is uh, Manolis and I'm here with Yanis from Net Company. Net Company is uh, formerly known as Net Company and uh, Intrasoft International, where they joined forces a couple of years ago. And uh, we are expanding uh, inside Europe. So I'm here to present to you okay, a RAG application, which is used internally uh, for our operations, but also as an accelerator for our clients. Uh, you might wonder, okay, everyone is doing RAG right now, uh, retrieval augmented generation. Uh, I wanted to emphasize that uh, I believe that RAG is a very critical component in the, the AI integration. Uh, through, through my years of experience, the last 20, 25 years, and going from uh, academia also to multiple uh, industries, uh, and uh, following the AI revolution the last uh, 20, 24 years, as I said, uh, I always, uh, I, 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 I always, there was a, a fight between uh, two logics for AI. The one was the machine learning approach, and the second was the symbolic AI. Uh, during this period, there were, there were small periods where the symbolic AI was uh, considered as the solution, and now we're in a period that uh, machine learning with LLMs is considered a solution. For me, the future uh, needs a combination. So the challenge for us now, for AI, is to integrate these two worlds, symbolic AI and machine learning AI. There is also a field that is more research-oriented, the neurosymbolic AI. So I think that RAG is a small step towards this direction. We are not sure how we, we, will this involve, if RAG will become obsolete, but certainly the experience working with RAG is critical. So, everyone has this experience, okay, working with the digital assistants, chat CPT. Uh, everything looks smooth, you are getting answers, uh, you think that you resolve all your problems. But in order for this to give value for you, especially in the corporate environment, uh, you need to integrate your internal data, your internal, uh, your private data. And also you, you need to, as possible, uh, limit the your data from being exposed outside. So, there are two ways uh, to do this. There's the in-context learning and fine-tuning. Usually, the second uh, route uh, is expensive. The second route is expensive and also becomes problematic when you want to fine-tune fine because you need to... You might in, in, uh, inject your new knowledge, but in parallel, you are degrading the model uh, with the previous knowledge that was trained during the pre-trained period. The in-context learning, uh, okay, there are again two ways. One is just stuffing, stuffing your context, your data inside. Of course, this seems feasible because we are looking at all these LLMs, uh, trending and increasing the context window. And there is also another approach, which, okay, needs more sophistication and preparation. This is the re retrieval augmenting generation. Uh, so you use your preferred LLM uh, with uh, not having a very extended uh, context window as requirement. What we did in that company is we decided to proceed with RAG, build an internal tool, augment our corporate processes, and enhance our experience. As I said, uh, we are using uh, this solution as an accelerator during our selling process and uh, business development process with our clients. So what is, I, I will try to be fast, what is the RAG? RAG is three, three components, retrieval, augmentation, and generation. The basic uh, advantage is that uh, combines, uh, uh, give, uh, gives knowledge, inject knowledge to the LLM, you inject knowledge to the LLM beyond uh, its pre-trained data, your data. And the second very important uh, benefit is that you ground the LLM, because as you know, the LLM has many hallucinations uh, problems. The basic steps is retrieval. This is the, this is the process that you uh, prepare documents, you break it into passages, you index these passages the, uh, using a, a model, and then you are, you are able to retrieve the specific uh, portions of the document that are relevant to your query. The augmentation phase is the combination of, the, uh, of, the, of the, all the passages of the document that were retrieved with your initial query. And the final is a generation. The generation is the is you combine uh, your query with the context that was retrieved uh, and you get an answer. 
So it's like an aug augmenting actually your query with internal knowledge. The applications are many, uh, conversational agents, recommendation, text completion, fast checking, information summarization, information retrieval, question answering, document classifications. There are too many applications. Our clients are looking all the time uh, for POCs and, uh, and understand the value that this is bringing. Everyone is asking for RAG, as I said. So, there is a statement uh, that RAG uh, will be obsolete with long context LLMs. I have my doubts for this. Uh, for example, all the long context LLMs suffer from this needle in the haystack. This means that there is no accuracy, precision accuracy, uh, the, the same uniform precision accuracy inside the context. So you might lose your data that you injected. Uh, also the cost and the inference cost because you need to include all your data in your requests. Uh, the data are growing. Uh, so this will this, your internal data that you want and external probably that are not part of the pre-trained uh, process. Uh, so the requirement of new data is always increased. Another challenge is the is the integration uh, of LLMs with structured data. There are many companies that are uh, putting a lot of effort structuring the data with enterprise data models and in a consistent way. So this also is not working out of the box. I mean, you just put your structured data in whatever format in an LLM context and you get your results. This is not working. Again, you need some kind of improving the retrieval. Uh, so, for, for, my, for my, my opinion, is RAG is here to stay. Maybe this will evolve somehow inside something greater, let's say, and uh, an LLM-powered uh, agent. Uh, so, I think that this effort is needed for the integration, and uh, many disrupt, disruptive applications are coming. For example, there is a recent... Uh, paper uh, describing that uh, uh, using RAG with an LLM, you are able to uh, approach the human crowd performance for forecasting. Okay, So many disruptive applications are coming. So this is just the simple conceptual architecture of RAG. This is something that everyone is doing, it's starting from this. Uh, you can see that this, the documents, we are splitting into chunks, then bendings, a DB, dense, dense vector. Uh, then, when the uh, queue arrives, uh, there is an embedding again to go back to make a correlation with the uh, embeddings from the database. You augment the request to RAG. Okay? So, this is the simple architecture. Uh, basic improvements is meta prompting and reasoning. Uh, this is part of the generation phase. Uh, chunking strategy. The ch chunking strategy could be very critical depending on your input data. Uh, how you what also there is there are two models here actually here this, this uh, the in the embeddings a model creating the embeddings and a model uh, making the generation so you need also to decide about the 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 bending model the sentence transformers and uh, as I said also generation uh, LLM is always critical because this gives you the answer so at Net Company we are looking multiple directions to improve this. Uh, I will try to describe fast some of the directions that we're looking. First of all, a very critical direction is what we're doing with our documents. Maybe you have very uh, stru uh, complex structured documents, XMLs, PDFs, uh, whatever. So for each case, you need to understand how, what to use, what tools to use there. You can use, again, uh, transformers. There are visual document recognition transformer models that you can use. So you need something to do about this, depending on the input data. This is not working out of the, out of the box. Uh, other, other direction is the creation of uh, augmented metadata. You can use the LLM to create metadata of your documents and your document chunks. This will help you to when you are trying to get your results. Uh, you can use uh, two types of, uh, of uh, um, um, sparse vector and uh, dense vector embedding. The sparse vector vecting is something that is used, for example, in Elasticsearch for years. Okay? So you can combine these two. Uh, another critical part is the re-ranker, which actually can improve because you are making always a discount due to processing reasons, and uh, you are not using, for example, a cross-encoder. You are splitting the process of the embeddings. So you need, you, the re-ranker is very critical to improve the final chunks that will be included in the question. And also, what you can do is uh, change your question, you know, make it uh, before 
uh, before getting your, your uh, relevant documents, maybe you can transform this. There is, a, for example, there is hide now. That is a new process that is uh, proposed. I will describe some of the key points of our initial development of this internal tool. Uh, these four, structured chunking, metadata augmentation, hybrid search, and uh, intention. Uh, just to give you some implementation details. Uh, the, the first, the first uh, when, when its uh, text arrives, you, you need to, uh, to transform this to a markdown. We convert the files to markdown, so we have a common uh, uh, format for the input data. Uh, we split the documents based on the headings. Uh, we, we create overlapping chunks. And we, and we extract uh, metadata for its chunks to improve uh, searching. In the metadata extraction, what we did initially uh, is do, that we used, uh, again, an LLM, uh, Gen AI, to generate from the chunks uh, categories, so categorize the chunks automatically, extract the main keywords and name entry resolution and in order to improve further we extracted the concepts of the document all these are extracted from the with the llm and they're enriching the metadata which is helping our, our search also the headings as a, as a structural structural data of your documents because you're having this document structure this is also a part of the metadata all these are helping the are, are are improving the quality of the result. Uh, we also used hybrid search. We used the one uh, search of with amendings. Uh, that's what we saw. We we in order to improve uh, the responsiveness because this could be for large uh, corpus of data. This could be slow. Uh, we used the hierarchical navigable small worlds. This is like a hierarchical uh, graph which is helping to find to find the easier and faster the relevant uh, documents uh, with uh, cosine similarity in the full text search uh, we implement again we used the uh, postgres sql all this were we were looking something fast at the beginning now we're improving things you we used an, a built-in postgres sql uh, ts vector function which is doing the like the bag of words a simple bag of words with an inverted index which is giving you giving you lexical search results and then you need to combine this. It's the simple, more heuristic approach to combine them is the RRF, the reciprocal rack fusion. Uh, this is doing something simple but also efficient. It's combined the, the it, it combined the, the ranking one, two, three of each document, and using this formula and uh, weights, depending on where in which one of these two you want to in, give more uh, uh, weight provides a, a final rank and ranks now the chunks with a combined approach. Okay. Something else that was critical for us because we want to diversify the, how, how, we are, uh, how we are using this uh, rag. From the beginning, we started having intentions. Intentions is we change how the LLM works and we touch every part of the LLM, uh, of the LLM process, the RAC process, depending on how we want this, uh, uh, this uh, LLM to respond. So we had a general uh, one of general questions, the dead company one, which uh, where we index our company's policy and it's uh, optimized for searching this. Deliverables, this is used to, for project deliverables, code, this is uh, uh, optimized for code. Uh, also, this code, this code uh, improvement, this code uh, rag, uh, we, we implemented two plugins from IntelliJ and Visual Studio, and also a last uh, application was the tender writing to when you, you know, for pre-sales activities. In the table, uh, okay, I'm not going one by one these lines. I'm just saying that you can see that these are the multiple aspects that we're changing for its intention to optimize the behavior of the agent let's say oh, agent maybe it's too much data source which is the data source the document tracking technique the metadata extraction we extracted many metadata but depending on the case we are using some of them search method hybrid and where we give as said our our uh, which one we prefer uh, with the weights and with tune uh, the, the the purpose uh, personality this usually affect the prompt okay 
uh, context line, uh, guidelines, and of course the temperature, depending on the, on the application. Uh, this is just a simple uh, slide. I want just to say that because I want to emphasize that it's the embedding is critical, so the model that it creates the embedding is critical for the performance of the full uh, integration. Uh, we started comparing uh, with OpenAI, these new embedding models. We did some heat maps, we tried also some uh, uh, dimension reduction techniques and to understand and to visualize if uh, these clusters, the relevant clusters, the relevant texts, and we somehow ended up with these two, at the moment, uh, multilingual uh, bending models working for English and Greek. Uh, they work also for other languages, but this is the language that we do the benchmarking. So, the next steps uh, for this is uh, development of advanced hierarchical checking techniques. We, this is ongoing. We are going to um, uh, create big and small chunks. So you need you need to create to decide how to connect this. So when you extract uh, from your uh, from your data, you can also include parts of the documents that are relevant, but somehow are not in the high ranking of the, your results. Implement a stronger ranker. This is critical for us to combine uh, to, for cross on context to improve the, but also to for the rank fusion process. Uh, of course, this is critical for us to improve the RAG uh, for the Greek uh, language and also improve the metadata augmentation phase with uh, knowledge graphs yeah. beyond uh, just a simple uh, entity resolution. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, my name is Yanis Christou. I am a colleague of Manos. Uh, I work uh, at, a net, at a net company, Intrasoft. Uh, can you hear me, by the way? Yes, yes. All right, great. Um, the difference between us is that... Uh, Wait a minute, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will give you... Okay. Thank you. Try it out. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. better. Okay. <laughs> so, as I was saying, my name is Yanis Christou. I'm a colleague of Manos. I work at net company Intrasoft. But the difference between us is that I work at the Research and Innovation Development Department. So, what I'm going to describe is not so much a finished product, as is the Easley AI that uh, Manos uh, so nicely presented. Instead, it is uh, our uh, research efforts uh, to use on-premises uh, LLMs uh, with uh, fine-tuning to produce uh, faster and more accurate results. So, whereas uh, uh, Manos tried to convince you that RAG is the way of the future, I'm going to try to convince you that fine-tuning is the way of the future for many, many reasons. Uh, one of which, uh, a main reason maybe is that uh, we observe speed-ups of uh, 10 or sometimes even 100 in the LLM response. So, um, how did we come to work uh, on uh, on-premise LLMs? And, uh, of course, this means private LLMs. This, starts, uh, this journey starts uh, quite some time ago when we were uh, tasked by the uh, European Central Bank to do a small scouting project uh, for uh, synthetic data. And uh, there, with, uh, in, within our interactions with them, uh, it was made obvious that uh, many European organizations, in, of course, including Euro, the, Europe, the ECB, but many others, r really care about where their data live, where their data reside. And uh, if possible, they want to keep their data within their own premises. Therefore, um, we started uh, on our own, on this journey, to see how we can uh, provide an LLM that uh, can actually perform on par, if not with uh, ChatGPT 4, at least with ChatGPT 3.5 or beyond, to uh, work on niche use cases for uh, various uh, uh, mostly European clients. Now, um, LLMs, uh, of course, uh, can uh, act as uh, digital assistants. Um, I don't know how many of you remember the PDA, the Personal Digital Assistant. 
In a certain sense, uh, we would like to think of this uh, as a continuation of the personal digital assistant in the sense that it is something that is completely yours, right? And uh, remains uh, in uh, your premise, everything remains in your premises. Now, the various uh, use cases that uh, we could have, uh, we could imagine for uh, uh, such uh, digital assistants would vary from uh, tools for information retrieval to argument builders to explainers of various steps uh, in uh, a process uh, to standard uh, reporting uh, and uh, uh, similar uh, enterprise tools. Now, to build such uh, an LLM on-premise is not an easy task, uh, of course. It starts from, uh, remember that we are talking about uh, a, a, an LLM that works very well for a specific use case, for a specific purpose that the client wants. So, uh, this pipeline for creating such a tool starts uh, with uh, data gathering, which involves, of course, a gathering of uh, PDFs, um, Excel documents, uh, all kinds of office documents, uh, all kinds of documents that uh, you know very well about. Then doing appropriate text processing to extract the various, uh, not only chunks of uh, text, but uh, information from within these documents. And here I want to particularly mention the difficulty in extracting tables and information about figures from PDF documents in particular. Also other office documents, but uh, PDFs are particularly notoriously hard to extract tables from in a reliable manner. Uh, but it is doable and we are doing it. And from there, turning this information into actual knowledge. And uh, this knowledge will be very useful in actually um, not derailing the LLM in long-term conversations, uh, the long-context LLMs that Manos was mentioning. Uh, using exactly this uh, graph, this knowledge in the, in the uh, format of knowledge graphs. Now, knowledge graphs, uh, those of you who are old like me might remember them from the days of semantic web and ontologies. So, um, if you remember RDFs, uh, or if you have ever worked with, uh, the, uh, within the era of semantic web, you would know these things uh, already very, very well. It is just a renaming of this technology. Uh, and of course, uh, with uh, the, ex the expansion and revolution of LLMs, uh, this thing uh, has turned into uh, a big uh, industry, and there are various tools uh, that uh, can help uh, not only with the conversion of text uh, into knowledge graphs, but also with uh, the processing of those graphs for uh, uh, whatever purposes uh, you might have before you give them into the LLM itself. After that, uh, you have, of course, to select uh, the appropriate LLM because uh, not all, LLM, all LLMs perform at the same level for the same purpose. What we have found is that uh, for our purposes, for the uh, European Commission, certain uh, DGs at least uh, purposes, the Mistral Instruct 7B performs at least uh, performs around at the level of ChatGPT 3.5. So it was a great choice. Uh, unlike uh, other tools that uh, only a few months ago uh, were seemed to, seemed to be the best uh, choice, like Falcon, Falcon 7B, Falcon 40B, and if you have a big enough machine, maybe the Falcon 180 billion parameter uh, model. Um, and of course, uh, these things uh, keep uh, competing with each other. So we have Llama 3 these days. And uh, they, this tool is also doing uh, excellently. Maybe we will be using it for certain other cases. Um, after that, uh, you have uh, to include uh, some, maybe some uh, uh, retrieval augmented generation uh, in the form of appropriate prompt engineering. The problem with this is, of course, that uh, uh, the more documents you give into your knowledge database, your uh, actual embedding, vector embedding database, the slower the response of the LLM becomes. And uh, we have seen this, at least in uh, uh, relatively uh, small machines, we have seen this uh, being a major uh, problem. Uh, the reason is, of course, that uh, you have only one or maybe two GPUs, 
with a certain uh, bandwidth and a certain capacity in terms of its uh, video RAM and uh, therefore uh, working out the answer when it also has to go and fetch from the disk the appropriate uh, chunks and uh, process them can be uh, a serious uh, uh, you know, uh, slowdown. Um, sorry about this, let me just come back to the what here all right um, after that uh, we, you have to fine-tune your LLM which uh, we do using the transformers uh, library of uh, hugging face uh, you can do standard uh, low rank adaptation techniques to modify all the parameters of your uh, uh, neural network uh, of your transformer or you can uh, try to adapt only a few of the last layers which is faster and uh, sometimes uh, it may be enough. Nevertheless, what we have seen is that uh, for various use cases you can actually fine tune a model such as Mistral Instruct uh, 7B with, uh, within uh, less than 10 minutes. So with a library of maybe 20 or 30 PDF documents of size a few megabytes each, you can fine-tune your uh, Mistral Instruct uh, in, a small, in a machine that is not that big in less than 10 minutes of uh, time. And uh, the responses uh, are most of the time uh, extremely accurate and uh, very much uh, to the point. Of course, you can help with prompt engineering. Uh, to tell it uh, to stay on the course and uh, also add uh, a little bit of uh, uh, knowledge graph uh, instructions to make it uh, not uh, start hallucinating at any point uh, in time. Uh, and then of course we have the issues of model deployment which uh, means that when you are running your LLM on your own premises you have to have the right equipment, right? And I'm saying this because uh, even with tools such as VLLM, I don't know how many of you know of this project from the University of California at Berkeley, but uh, the idea is that uh, they are working on a page attention mechanism to allow more than one concurrent uh, answer to more than one concurrent query to be working on in the GPU of the machine at, uh, at the same time. And of course, in order to do that, you have to have a very, very smart management of the GPU memory and the GPU to CPU memory um, swaps in and out. Even with that, even with such uh, systems, the idea is that uh, you cannot serve many people at the same time from a single machine or maybe two or three machines. So model deployment plays a role here, okay? And you have to figure out how, if you want to serve many, many people concurrently, you have to figure out how to deploy a cluster of uh, GPUs that uh, will allow you to do that. And then, of course, we have the UI integration, which refers to the, all the backend uh, systems that uh, will allow you to manage, to administer this entire uh, infrastructure. And finally, of course, uh, you have uh, testing and evaluation of the model, which uh, will give you uh, some idea of uh, how well your model is performing over time. I will not go through the monitoring and maintenance as relatively trivial. <laughs> okay, so pretty much uh, this is all I wanted to say. The next few slides just describe with words uh, exactly what I have been uh, saying already with the help of just one figure. So, um, yeah, pretty much this is it. The only last thing I wanted to expand a little bit upon is uh, the building of knowledge graphs. So, uh, here we are using techniques, I told you that uh, this is a glorified uh, uh, RDF ontologies and uh, the, the like tools. Uh, I would like to point out uh, techniques such as named entity recognition and dependency parsing that we use to actually extract the entities and relationships from our test data. Uh, we are, of course, uh, considering various graph technology databases. 
for storing querying knowledge graphs efficiently. And uh, of course, uh, this uh, allows us to enrich the knowledge graph construction with uh, explainable methods for uh, relationship inference, and uh, uh, which actually adds to the explainability powers of the LLM. And with that, I think that I am going to uh, stop here. I already mentioned the issues uh, uh, with uh, involved in uh, deploying a model, so as well as tuning the uh, LLM. So I guess it's time to thank you very much and give the floor back to Manos. Thank you, Yanis. Thank you, Manolis. Thank you, gentlemen. Can you? We have now a 10 hey, minutes. We have, we have a small, I will try to keep it short. We have, okay. A, okay. So I think we finished early. Lama 3 was out. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Yesterday. So Lama 2 now is obsolete. <laughs> okay. So uh, what I would like to share is that I, I, I we said about RAG. Uh, I believe that RAG uh, and this kind of technique is the future because there was also a recent uh, announcement from uh, Berkeley AI Research that this, this paradigm shift from a single model to compound AI. So we're talking about the Grayson, we're talking about uh, of agents with uh, components, uh, with, uh, with tools. Okay, that's why I think RAG and knowledge graph is a very important, is very important to, for the future. Uh, but for us, what was also critical is that we want our solutions uh, to work for our Greek customers, of course. So uh, there is no actually open source uh, uh, model uh, working well with Greek. There is a few days, a few weeks ago, there was a Meltemi, a new, a new one model. We are assessing all this. Uh, okay, it's not, so actually we don't have an open source model working uh, good with Greek. Uh, there is a lot of work that is needed because you need to change the tokens, uh, to add tokens. You need to train also with previous data, so it becomes very, very expensive and, uh, and uh, difficult. Uh, but on our side we need a Greek uh, model. So why, why Lama, Lama 2? Why we chose Lama 2? Uh, Lama 2 was trained with uh, 2 trillion tokens, has a free for commercial use. Uh, the, it has a performance fine-tuned chat model, uh, which also has some, ensures some kind of safety and help, helpfulness. And uh, Lama 2 is a single modality LLM. And it seems that Lama 2 somehow understands basic Greek language. Okay. So, uh, we started uh, testing this and we asked Poso uh, Kalagnoris how, how good you know uh, Greek. The answer is uh, Mambo Jumbo. So it's obvious that understand. So in all the trials we did, the, the, the LLM, the Lama 2 was understanding what we were saying, was trying to give an answer towards, let's say, the good direction, but it was failing lexical. Uh, uh, answering in English, both English, Greek. Uh, in the, this is obvious also from the paper that introduced Lama 2, that the Greek language is beyond the 0.005%. So Greek are missing from the pre-trained uh, uh, data set of the model. So we needed to do something about this. Uh, of course, there is the usual uh, route of continued pre-training. This is very expensive. Continuing this, we will need uh, many GPUs. Uh, we need to, as I said, to change the tokens. We need to avoid catastrophic forgetting because we will add new knowledge, but we forgot about the previous well, previous knowledge and we deteriorate the, the quality of the model. Um, so in order to avoid this, and having in mind that we have some specific instruction-based uh, 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 instruction uh, use cases, Okay, uh, and the goal of our investigation, of course, was not just to do this. It's also to increase our knowledge and our tools, internal tools, and how we are working with all this. So our approach was use the Lama 2 7-bit chat, avoid again pre-train, uh, fine-tuning the full model. We use the PEFT uh, parameter-efficient fine-tuning methodology, the QLORA. 
uh, the basic, uh, what basically is doing this QLORA is minimizing the train number models to a small percent of the full weights of the model, quantize okay, the, the, the weights. Uh, there is minor impact to the inference time delay because there, there is a small percentage of extra model. And uh, there is also ability to generate uh, multiple QLORA fine-tuned models on specialized tasks. So we want something which is fast, uh, uh, flexible. Um, the data set. We started looking for a data set. We started with the CC100. This is a very big data set for multiple languages. The Greek samples were about 20, uh, 12 million text samples, uh, chunks of uh, text, whatever, from uh, common crawl. Uh, the CC100 had an advantage that they, they did a filtering mechanism to keep only the high quality corpora, like Wikipedia. And there are about 156 models trained or fine tuned on this CC100. The next uh, step was okay, we, we want to avoid this uh, full uh, continuation of uh, pre uh, training, which is expensive. So, and we want to improve this for a case, for Greek summarization. So what we did is we created a distilled knowledge uh, from an existing uh, model, uh, the Greek T5, MT5, small Greek sum. We use this to summarize uh, the chunks of data. We did also some uh, filtering to keep uh, a small uh, uh, paragraphs of 200 to 300, so the, the, the intention, the, the topic inside this uh, remains stable. And we created a paragraph summary uh, data set. And we used this data set to train our model. Okay? And this is ongoing, sorry, it's not finished. Uh, the, the, the summarization model was very good. It was, uh, this was created from a Greek university, and there's also a publication about this, and used the Greek sum data set. The tools that we used, because as I said, our, our goal was to create a playground uh, for inference and uh, fine tuning. We used Axolotl. This Axolotl is a wrapper of all the transformers, uh, PEFT, and also helps you to, to use advanced, uh, like deep speed, uh, advanced uh, flash attention, advanced uh, techniques that are inside this. And you, you just can use just a CLI, a command line, a simple API. It helps you expose also your model in a UI with a web application. So as I said, because our target was also to create this playground, we used Axolotl. Okay. So this is ongoing. The fine tuning is ongoing right now. Uh, couple, uh, in parallel, we are um, assessing other models like the Meltemi, Mistral. Now we need to assess also Lama 3. Okay. Uh, the final, the final, uh, final. So what we need, we need uh, to create a golden record, a golden uh, data set. So we compare all these models and, and also benchmark our result. Not just, I'm not talking about the quantitative. About the quantitative, there are many data sets. We need some golden uh, data set for our use cases to be sure that it's working as expected for specific instruction cases. Uh, we need to fine tune for other tasks because our, from, our clouds, from, our, from our clients, there are many requests for other also uh, use cases. Uh, we need to improve, as I said, the uh, next target is to enhance now uh, beyond the Greek language to a specific domain knowledge, legal, because also NetCommerce has this nomos, which is used by the lawyers. And uh, we need to assess any new entrants, for example, Lama 3 now. Okay? This is our next steps. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.